Hello everybody. I've never made a tier list before, but I watched a uh, video about somebody ranking all the units in Ogre Battle 64, and they did things like place one of the basically best units in the game in D tier, and it, uh, it, it bothered me to such a degree that I felt compelled to make a tier list myself. I'm not a... I don't know if I'm a very competent presenter and or speaker, but I don't know if I'll be able to sleep at night without actually making something that's relatively more accurate than theirs. Over Battle is an army game slash RPG slash strategy game, loosely. The game itself is unfortunately one of the least challenging games I've ever played, um, but it's also so fun in terms of army building and role playing uh, that even though it presents no challenge, it is just fun to go through. With that in mind, um, I was trying to decide how to rate all the units, given that even the weakest units that you start with, i.e. fighters and Amazons, could literally be the only units you have, and you could still win the game relatively easily. Um, with that in mind, I think I need to kind of base this purely on these, re the relationship to one another. As you could win the game with pretty much all the units, except for, actually bar none, you could, if you have the worst units in the F, in the F tier and maybe the D tier, you could win the game easily. So, um, we're going to just have to do this based on how these units stack up to one another. Uh, not necessarily how useful they are in game, but there, there's other factors that are going to come into play, which we'll talk about. But we'll start with the fighter. I really don't want to put him in F tier. Uh, I probably should. He's got average defense, but he is adaptable in that you can put a helmet on him, different shields, different armor, different. Like, he could have the, some of the best swords in the game once you find him, which will really buff him. Uh, he will never obviously climb that high, but um, he's got a lot of utility on his own in the beginning. He'll be the backbone of the army. Uh, yeah, I, I like the fighter. The next one we'll do is the ogre. This is the main, um, one of the main enemies you fight. It's a representative of the netherworld, so to speak. The ogre battles, they're, these are the ogres. <laughs> And unfortunately, they are terrible. Most of your upgraded units that are high tier, we'll get into them like Paladins, Black Knights, and so on, actually have much better stats than the Ogres do. This is a large unit, which means it takes up two spots in your army, or in your unit. And your unit can only have five small units, so if you take out two small units, you can add a large unit. There is, I would rather have, <coughs> I really can't think of two units I would replace the ogre with if I was making a unit. They just are not that good. Uh, the stats in this game are health points, strength, vitality, intelligence, mentality, dexterity. And he pretty much sucks in all those except for health and strength. And a lot of your units get the same amount of strength, if not more. And all of the large units you can really get, the upgraded final versions of them, have much, much better stats than him as far as level progressions. Almost to the point of being twice as good, which is absolutely pathetic. I'm actually going to put him in D tier. I can't do C. We're going to put him in F tier. He is so bad. Um, if he was a small unit, and you could have two of them, like four of them in a unit, with the exact same stats, damage, everything else, he might be a D, top of D, low C. Like, like, But the fact that he is just so big, he is one of the worst units in the game, which is sad, because it's, uh, it's, just, it's just so bad. Amazon... Female counterpart to a fighter, similar stat growth, not the best, not the worst, but you know she attacks from the back twice, good accuracy, decent dodge. Um, 
if you had the right equipment, you had three fighters in the front and two Amazons in the back, you could actually win the game with some upgraded uh, Amazons and fighters. Unfortunately, they can't lead any units because they're not, you know, upgraded. You need to they need to be promoted to a different tier before they can be a leader. But you know, they're not ter- they're not awful. Uh, but they're they're obviously not good. Let's do the zombie next. The zombie is, I think, the worst unit in the game. And the reason why I said I can't imagine any taking out any two units of a unit and replacing them with the ogre, the reason I didn't think of the zombie is you should never ever have any zombies ever. They are they are the worst units in the game. One of the great things about this game is unit customization. Like individual unit within a larger, we'll call them, I don't know, we'll call them platoons. I guess that's why people call them tunes. Within a larger platoon of five units, you can upgrade and change the equipment of each person. You can upgrade them with, you know, stat boosting items and or uh, equipment. The zombie cannot wear anything and it has terrible stats probably the worst stats of almost any small unit. So, yeah, they're probably going to be the bottom of F. I wanted to do some of the enemy units to start, some of the the darker ones, just to kind of share how once the game actually gets to a point where you're fighting the evil forces, it's actually really pathetic. If there was no zombie in the game, I might have the goblin character be the worst unit. He's basically a fighter. The only thing is is you can't upgrade him into anything, so why would you ever have him? Um, he's basically got fighter stats for the fighter short sword. Um, yeah, there's not much more to say about him. This is a Gorgon. I'm going to put her... I'm going to put her in the bottom of D tier. One of the strengths of this game, why it's so fun, is the upgrade quality of changing your units in higher and higher tiers. The dark units, you know, zombies never... Well, zombies can get upgraded, but that's we'll get into that later. Goblins, ogres, and gorgons can't be upgraded to anything. Gorgons are interesting in that they can petrify somebody if they're in the front row, but uh, in the back row they just get two shots. But overall their stats are not good. They're basically Amazons. You know, just... A lot sexier. So, our first upgraded unit is the archer. Um, whenever I I have no fear in fighting them, but I really don't have any fear in fighting any unit in the game because the AI and the enemies are always so easy. But they're just she's a placeholder for the Amazon um, on the way up to upgrading her once again. If you're going for a back ranged character. Archers are the next step up from the Amazon. Better equipment, better stat growth before they get up to the next tier. They don't have a enchanted weapon, which a lot of the uh, higher tier units that you promote will have naturally elemental weapons, which make them do more damage than they normally would. But uh, yeah, overall, just an upgraded Amazon. Not too shabby. Wizard. Wizard's right up there with the uh, with the archer. He's not great. He's not bad. He's he's both of these are specialized. She's specialized for damage and range, but she doesn't have good defense or good much anything else. He's specialized for you know magic damage. He basically gets a lot of intelligence, and over time, uh, as you upgrade him into new things, he'll be better. But you know he's just not that impressive on his own, but he is obviously has a better progression path than the fighter in the Amazon. Beast Tamer, we're going to put him in C tier as well. I'm tempted to put him into D tier, but again, he's just better than the fighters. <sighs> we're going to put him into D tier. <laughs> it's really sad. So these are these are tier one units basically. 
these are upgraded versions of these guys with different purposes and paths. So yeah, the one of the reasons why he's in the D tier is he does not have any good armor that you can customize him with. His weapon is a whip, which is not good as far as having like weapon customization either. I would rather have a fighter with good equipment and an equal level going up against a beast master or a beast tamer at least. Um, because their weapons and customization are just better. Down the road, obviously, his stats will be good, but you're not going to get high enough to have it make that big of a difference. His true strength lies in leading a unit of beasts because they increase the damage of those beasts by 10%. So instead of doing like 20, they would do 22, which may not seem like much, but when you start factoring in critical hits or, uh, you know, the beasts that are normally attacking three times, as he's, uh, it adds up. But individually, even with that, it's just not enough for me to put him up there. Fencer, an upgraded version of a fighter. I am I'm very, very hesitant about whether I want to put him in B or A. And my rationale is this. Out of all the mid-tier characters, or tier 2 characters, wizards, knights, you know, the fencer, uh, the beast tamer, all those guys, he has the best stat growth. He has the worst survivability in terms of defense, but as the game progresses, uh, his ability to block, his ability to dodge, and his massive damage output, um, it eventually makes up for it. I would rather, if I could have level one male fighters that were going to become anything, I would rather have them start off as fencers because they have the best stat progression. Um, I'll just quickly give you an example of... kind of show you what I'm talking about for anybody that doesn't care. So this is an example of a fighter. Every level he gets four hit points, three strength, two, two, one, two. Like, it's not that great. You get up to a phalanx, gets better armor, and same hit points, a little, like, the same strength, but his vitality is higher, which is about his physical defense. So four, four, three, three, two, two, two. You go down to a path, like a knight. Good strength, good hit points, some vitality. You go down to the fencer, overall, I've added these up, you can do it yourselves, but they have on average f like three to five more stat points per level than their counterparts, whether they are knights, wizards, berserkers, whoever. Um, that's just kind of to give you an idea of what we're talking about. Each of these do different things, but <sighs> dexterity is about blocking, agility is about speed and attacking, mentality is about magic resist, strength is about damage. Hit points are three, which is lower, but it doesn't really... It's it's not that big of a thing. His, his weakest things are intelligence, which it could be zero for all I care on a sword fighter. Vitality is pretty low, but even with the knight, you know, it's... I think they make up... The reason why the stats are so high is because they have to be, because unlike every other character, they're, they're just built different. Uh, they don't have the armor, they don't have the shield, they don't have the vitality and the like overall strength, hit points and vitality of like a berserker or like a beastmaster, which is just kind of the same thing. Um, so they have all these extra stats because down the road there'd have to be some kind of trade-off, but trade-off for them not being able to survive as much. But that's, that's one of the reasons why I have to put them in B or A. I can't, I don't think I can put him in A because any character I'd put in A would probably just womp on them. <sighs> but uh, as far as utility and having a cheap character to level up with throughout the game, like if, you, if the game was hard and you needed to min max, these guys would probably go up to A because they'd be low A, but they would be A because they're the they'd be one of the most important units. You'd All all your men would have to be built as them. Uh, it would just be necessary. But since this is just purely a, a comparison between the units and less about the metagame, we're going to put him in B. Dragon Tamer. She's basically a beast tamer, 
a little bit, I would say, better stat. She comes with a helmet. Her armor's a little better. She suffers from the same problem as the Beastmaster in that on her own, she's not a good unit. She does not do the right... She doesn't do a good amount of damage. She doesn't defend very much. Her strength lies in leading a group of dragons, which is fine. But, uh, again, for most of the game, you're not going to want one or use or use one. Because you're not going to have good dragons or beasts early on. But generally, her stats and equipment are a little better than the Beast Tamer, so we'll put her above him. Dragon Master, we're going to put her in B. <sighs> or Dragoner. She's the... Uh, She's basically the upgraded version. Her stats are much stronger, but again, she physically is stronger than the fencer. Mm. But I'd honestly rather like have a dragoon or a special character lead a unit with a dragon in it than her because she just she just doesn't bring enough on her own. Uh, I'm trying to, it's low B or, or high C. High C is a fun fruity drink, so I might change her as we go on as we kind of compare and contrast, but... Uh. So next we got the knight, which is another upgraded version of the fighter. I'm going to put him in low B simply because as far as stats go, he's he's not as good as the fencer, but in a 1v1 fight, he will probably beat the fencer. Um, he's the most iconic overall character for Western, Western people, like the knight with the shield, the helm, the armor, the sword, like it's he's very iconic. He's a great unit for mid-tier. You know, if you have three knights in the front, um, with a healer in the back, and an archer or just two healers, like that's a that's a that's a pretty solid unit. Nothing's gonna nothing's gonna kill them, because again, the enemies in this game suck. But uh, again, if you if you want to build somebody with a little bit more defense, uh, who still has decent stat growth and health. He's not a bad pick. I put him above these characters here because, again, comparatively in a 1v1 fight, his defense will over overpower them, and he's just got a lot more utility. Uh, these guys are generally the backbone of, the, uh, of your army for most of the game. Valkyrie, she's just a kind of a crappy wizard. She's basically got a little, like half the defense of a knight and half the intelligence of the wizard. So she doesn't excel at anything. It's it's a little sad. In Ogre Battle March, the Black Queen, Valkyries, turn into Muses are pretty, pretty great, but. Yeah. But I'll keep them there. Average overall stat growth across everything, like a mat. Jack of all trades, master of none, and you want specialized people generally unless you're a fencer they're just, they're just really good berserker this is like our barbarian he could go high C the reason why she's here even though she has better stats than these guys is you it's you won't get her for quite a while it's very you're just not going to have one for a long time and even if you do she won't shine in terms of being able to do anything because she won't have any good dragons to to, to go with. So, yeah. I'm, uh, this guy actually has pretty decent stats. He's kind of like a phalanx without armor. Uh, he's got the attack of a swordmaster with the general defense of a knight, maybe a little bit less. But he's also has access to better weapons early on. Uh, you don't get a lot of them, but you know it's he's not bad. He's not great. Is he okay? This line right here between B and C, this is like fifty percent 
this is like average or below average. And yeah, I got to I got to put him here. He's not bad, but he's not he's not above average. Young Dragon, I would be tempted to put into F tier, but not because he's terrible. Although he is terrible. He's going in F, but he's going to go at the top of F because his only purpose is to really just evolve into something better and then evolve into something better after that. His stats suck, and uh, if there weren't any in the game, you know, if you were able to get something else earlier, that might be fine. It's He's fun in that, you know, you can kind of try to tailor the kind of dragon you get as far as their their element, but yeah, he's just... The reason he's not below the ogre is because one, he's a young dragon, he's tiny, and you know he's not a disappointment in the same way that these guys are. And he's not just awful like this guy, but he's he's actually about as awful stat-wise as that guy. But he's a small unit, and he can grow into new things, but yeah, he's pretty bad. Sorceress, we're going to put here... He's, he's, it's basically a female wizard, and he's basically a male sorceress. I mean, there's they're almost the same... I might put her a little bit higher because she's sexier, but, you know, uh, yeah, just high intelligence. Phalanx. I feel like these guys don't really have a place. Um, early game, the units that I have the most trouble with are actually enemy Phalanx units. They have... You don't have the def like the damage, the elemental damage, to, re to really, like, blast through their, their defense. You don't have the elemental damage, you don't have the high enough spells, you don't have the weapons, and you can kind of blast through these guys, these guys, and these guys, but you can't really deal with phalanxes. They're beefy enough where they're just, just not, not going to work. Um, their problem is, is they're basically scaling-wise. They do not scale in terms of damage at all. Knights get more strength. Berserkers get more strength, uh, fencers get more strength and dexterity, both of which are important for damage. These guys get the short end of the stick on both of those. They make up for it by having more vitality for defense and more hit points for you know that survivability. But again, if you're playing the game, you don't need survivability because, again, the enemies suck, and there is no challenge. Still... There are some pretty cool spears, and uh, you can role play where you've got, you know, one of your main characters or your special characters have like a, a phalanx retinue, like four of them, and then you give them all upgraded spears, and it's kind of fun. And they're useful. Um, they're not terrible. Uh, you know, so they're, from a role play perspective, you can, of course, win the game with a bunch of phalanxes. They're fun, but overall, Knights, these guys are a little bit better. Um, their survivability does make up for... They're just a little bit above the Berserkers, I would say. Angel Knights. They're either high B or low A. We don't have anyone in A yet, so we're going to put them in A. We might change it later. They're basically female characters that have died and if you have the right equipment they come back as angel knights and they're what's good about them is the best thing about them is a they're cool just from an aesthetic standpoint having angels on your team flying around in the air with swords that's just that's just really cool to me their weapon is virtuous it does virtue damage which is great um, they're like little flying paladins. They have access to good shields, good armor, um, a good base default weapon, which you can actually get multiple of, so you can get several of these ladies. <sighs> their strength is definitely in their mobility. Um, they're like a dragoner in terms of damage, but they're like a knight in how they can block, and they've got the the same kind of armor that a phalanx would wear as far as their body. So they're they're pretty fun, and they attack twice the same way these guys would, but overall, depending on how you built them up or who died, their stats are pretty decent. Not great. Um, but, yeah, they're, for right now, I'll put them in A. 
clerics are are an interesting one. I don't know where I'm going to put them yet. They could technically go in F tier because you don't need healing in the game. Your units can get so powerful so quickly and the enemies are so crappy, there's no need to survive. You can camp in the wild, you can sit in cities and heal. They're not necessary, but from a role play perspective and from a functionality perspective, they're just helpful. Having one in your group almost ensures you'll never die unless you're severely underleveled. Um, she's an upgraded version. Probably the first unit you can upgrade your Amazon to. We'll put her in B. She's just... In a, in a battle that lasts forever, whichever team has this girl on it will probably win because, again, in the, in the War of Attrition, your units will just, on average, slowly go down in HP because they keep getting healed, but the enemy, eventually they'll lose one and another, and yeah, she's just pretty valuable. Worm. Worms suffer from the large... I can't put them in the same thing with the young dragon. They have to go bottom of D. They're better than the Gorgon. And probably twice as much. Worms suffer from the same problem as uh, um, a lot of the large units. They just do not have the stat bumps or the functionality to really make up for taking up two spots. In the Ogre Battle March of the Black Queen, if you had a worm or a griffin on your side on your on your unit, you could or your platoon, you could you could do high flying, which more than made up for any shortcomings the unit had. It was just the mobility was fantastic. This game that it's not the case. The they don't carry any other, you know, units with them. If you've got a you know a beastmaster and this guy, they walk on the ground. So the whole reason to get one of these guys in the a lot of the other games was for the high flying perk, and unless they can level, like elevate everyone else for that mobility, it's just not worth it. And again, I said their stats; it's not very good. Um. This is our first upgraded dragon. It's a platinum dragon. We're going to put it in F tier. Not because it's bad. If I found one or if I had to use one, it's not the end of the world. And they have a good, you know, they have a good upgraded form. But it's the, it's the problem we were just talking about with the wyvern. They get one attack in the back. They get two in the front. And I would rather have two knights or two fencers or two, you know, phalanxes. Two wizards, two arch. I'd rather have two of almost anything else besides one of these guys. And that's part of the problem. They just... They just don't cut it. Archmage, easy A. Um, they're pretty close to an S. We're going to put them in S. Um, Archmages have the capacity to be the strongest units in the game. They get six, I think it's five or six intelligence. They get six intelligence per level. They, there are items in the game where if you wear them, it will buff a, uh, it'll buff certain stat gains per level. So if you give them the right staff, the right uh, robe, the right accessories, they can not only get six intelligence per game or per level, but uh, they might be able to get ten, which is absolutely crazy. That bumps them up to S tier for that reason alone. The second reason is that there are Draconite spell books, which again, if you wear one of those, it increases intelligence by level, and that does damage to all. In Ogre Battle March of the Black Queen, once you were not a wizard anymore, when you became a mage, you did magic all, which means it was an attack all against the enemy team. In Ogre Battle 64, they attack a group, like a, a, a three-square area, which is great, but again, getting a book that will help them attack everyone is insane, and again, with a uh, with a massive amount of intelligence, they are... Uh, they're absolutely one of the best units in the game. 
Golem, I'm going to put them in B, high B. And the reason is because this is one of the few times where early game, you can get golems really early, and if you have a doll master, which we'll get to, which increases their damage, they, two of them in the front row attacking six times versus, you know, three of these guys in the front row, which attack six times, these guys would take less damage and do more damage. They may not do as much damage to the Phalanx, but the Phalanx won't do hardly any damage to them. They'll take a little bit more damage from the Fencer, but they will wallop on the Fencer. Uh, they're one of the few bigger units. Not a, They're not a beast. They're a golem. They got their own special like class, but... Uh, <sighs> the only thing I would say is they're on the boring side. They're They're... I'm going to have to put them a little bit lower simply not because of their functionality but because uh, it's very hard to get them to upgrade and uh, it's while they have decent stat gains these guys don't upgrade by when they hit get certain stats they upgrade when certain things happen to them which is uh, you know what actually I have to put them in C um, the only way to get these guys upgraded is to get them petrified, which does not happen for quite some time. Speaking of which, where is my... There you are. We'll put you up here and we'll put you a little bit lower. So, uh, they're good on their own. They do not excel at combat. They excel at damage mitigation. They're great for holding a town, but their utility as far as growth and handling a lot of other units is just it's just not good. And they're also not really going to wipe out a lot of units. Even in this really simple game, they're just it takes them a while to chew through a lot of the units. And there's some that they just aren't going to be able to hurt. Any high defense unit with healing, they're just not going to be able to do much to. Well, that's where the strategy comes in. They're not supposed to be the, the killers. They're more of the defenders. These little guys... These are the soldiers by which everything you have uh, comes from. They actually have more defense than most of the uh, Tier 1 and Tier 2 characters, except for maybe the Phalanx, maybe the Knight. They can f attack together. Um, they're very cute. Um, they're very necessary for my roleplay experience, where I'm kind of, you know, I'm training... I'm training up Dio, one of our one of your friends. He's like learning how to be a good person and be a leader. And when Dio like levels up four or five of these guys, then I raise him into a warrior and reset his level. Yeah, just, these guys are fun. One on one, they are not as good as the fighters, obviously, but they are actually. It's interesting. Like if you have a group of them, they're. They're very cheap. They got decent utility. Obviously, one or two of them is not as good as a wyvern, but but again, they have a purpose that a wyvern doesn't have, because you shouldn't actually have a wyvern in your in your party. So we'll put them. They're 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 not great. We're not gonna put them up high, but they're they're kind of fun. All right. Next one we got the Freya, which is the upgraded version of the Valkyrie. It's basically a, a Valkyrie that uh, has more armor, does area of effect magic, much like the Archmage. The difference is, is that her intelligence goes up almost 50% slower, and a lot of her stats are put into... She, she, she's basically an upgraded Valkyrie. She's a master of none, jack of all trades. You can put her in the front and she'll be fine. You can put her in the back and she'll be fine. She's great for role playing. We'll put her in B. Um, the reason why she's below these guys is because these guys are tier two and she is a tier three as far as her upgrades. And she basically gets the same attacks in the front as these guys. She gets uh, decent attacks in the back, but overall she just kind of falls short. Like this is this is her final form, and she's not going to get better, and that's just disappointing. Beastmaster. 
This might surprise people, but I would put him in A simply for the fact that um, there's a unit in the game or an, an item in the game called Saint's Garb. Uh, it gives plus one to strength, plus one to health when you wear it. It's the best uh, light armor. Uh, there's a Blood Whip, which adds one to agility. Uh, you put those on a on him. Uh, get one as low level as you can, or even just cheat Gilbert in early. <sighs> we'll put him into high B. He just, he just, <sighs> it's low A. If you put him into a group with two Cerberuses, you know, two upgraded puppies, beasts, it's actually a really good unit. I wouldn't upgrade one yourself, but if you used Gilbert, who's the beast master that joins you in the game, uh, <sighs> He is not great, but he is not bad. So that's where we're gonna go with him. Black Dragon, same thing as, as this guy. They're just they just lack the uh, they just lack any utility. So you know, um, Stone Golem. I'll put the that guy above that. These guys are actually getting to the point where you have the damage and the um, you have the damage to actually start like hurting people and they do have a lot more defense a lot more resistance to fire and other elements um, they're pretty decent um, that's pretty much what I'll say about them just upgraded golem you have to be petrified to get there but Fire Dragon, same thing. Ninja, ninjas actually get better stats than um, their stats are on par with the Fencer Ninja Masters, which are these guys' upgraded version are among the best for the third tier. Um, but again, they're like a they do magic in the back, they attack in the front, and. Uh, well, these guys don't do magic in the back, I don't think. But um, I never use them. They're just, they're just. I, I just don't like the idea of ninjas in a standing army just running at each other. It's just from a conceptual standpoint, I just don't. I can't put them behind the gorgon. We'll put them right there ahead of the fighter. Dollmaster. They're kind of like the Valkyrie, except they don't use magic. Um, they need to be paired with a golem to be useful. Not much to say about them. Paladin. Low A, high S. You can get as many of these guys as you want, and these are one of the reasons why the game is so easy. Their equipment is top-notch, great defense, magic defense, attack, and all the other units that they fight against. They have an enchanted, virtuous sword called a blessed sword. They can cut through any unit. You got three of them in the front. That's nine attack, great defense, great dodging, great damage. Um, top tier frontline unit. Black Knight is an upgraded version of the Berserker. Him and the Paladin are counter opposites. They attack twice but get more strength per level. Uh. So, yeah, down the road, it's. Uh, I would say they're just a little bit cooler. Of all the units in the game, like we I showed you those stats at the beginning, these guys get a flat 30 total stat points, um, which is right on par with Anki Seth, uh, Bisk, like the best units in the game that you can get that are specific, like, like special characters. These guys have similar stat gains and actually the most strength gain in the game of any character that is not a large character. Um, you can only get like three of them max in the game without cheating, and there's a reason for that. They're absolutely incredible. I would raise a guy as a fencer into a black knight and then transition that person into something else if I wanted to, Just, but I would want to use those two stat boosts. Hawkman, I'm going to go with D tier. They can fly, but other than that, they're basically a beast tamer with wings and a cool hammer. Um, not the best. Blue Dragon or Thunder Dragon, Water Dragon, whatever those things are, just just you know, same as the rest. Which is very irritating. 
Um, again, on the enemy team, she can kind of cause a little bit of havoc with you, but she does no damage and really isn't a threat. There's no reason to use her because uh, she's... The one thing I will say about her is even though I don't feel like she has any utility on my team, she's one of the best characters for leveling up females. She has the best stat growth. So we'll, we'll go with that. Wyvern, upgraded version of... Well, I forget. One of these is a worm, one of them is a wyvern. We're going to put him... He's still crappy, does decent damage, but there's just no reason to have him. Still D, but he's better than the Wyvern. It's just... Ugh. Yeah. Obviously, he's better than the Witch in terms of combat, but she can put him to sleep, and as far as a small character, if you want to level up your characters, she's she's pretty, she's pretty good. Cataphract... He's decent, but he's basically a golem with an enchanted weapon. Uh, I would rather... Like if I was having a difficult game, I would rather go against three cataphracts in the front than I would paladins, black knights, or like sword masters. Sword masters, could, I could kill them, but they would do a lot of damage and potentially wipe out some of my people quick. These guys just aren't a threat. Centurions... We're going to put them right above zombies. Their only purpose is to lead legions, and legions are garbage. Yeah, we're going to... Yeah, there you go. Diana. She's basically a paladin in the back row, but she lacks the defense that he does. So she's just not as useful. We're going to put her above the Angel Knight because she's just... She's pretty strong, but... Just not quite there. Balder golems, if you cheat them in right at the beginning, they're S. If you just... You actually have to find them because there's no guarantee that you can actually get them to be evolved. Uh, they're almost indestructible. The enemy can't kill them. If you get these guys, they're great because you, you will never ever... They will never die. You just sit somewhere, camp, and just they, they cannot be killed. Um, they're... A fire and wind attack has to hit them. And uh, finding an enemy that will do a combo magic attack is just insanely... Like, it's just... I don't know if it ever really ha happens. Hellhound. We're going to put this guy... They're not as good as the golem. Like, if you were to fight a beastmaster with hellhounds... Um, hell. Actually, we got to put him... We're going to have to put them right, uh, right here because two of them versus those two golems, they, they're better at killing other units than the golem, but they are not as good at surviving. Uh, with a Beastmaster, they're good, but they're just... As far as beasts go, they're my favorite one, but yeah, they're just not the best. Ozzy... Ozzy Daka, whatever the hell his name is. This is the upgraded version of the Earth Dragon. He's going to be top A. He can't attack flying units, but he is probably the strongest dragon overall in terms of stats and debuffs. He lowers the power of enemies to the point where they don't damage you. Siren. Same thing as the Archmage. Doesn't have this access to the same equipment, so she won't do as much damage, but still very good. Cerberus. Upgraded version of the Hellhound. I'm actually going to put them high B, low A... I'm going to put them low A because with the Beastmaster, this is one of my favorite units. I like to give them like the the item that makes the unit go faster. I, like They're like a hunting unit. They are tanky. They are strong. They are, um, they're just awesome. Uh, excellent stat growth. Excellent defense. Resistance is just overall great. We get to our first legendary dragon. Bahamut is probably my, the coolest looking one. But he just... One of the reasons... We're going to put him in B. Great stats, but the problem is is that all the other dragons have debuffs as far as sleep, paralysis, you know, uh, damage down, whatever it is. He has none. So that's unfortunate. He's still a great unit. Um, good damage. Um, but yeah. 
Cockatrice, I never use them because I hate them, but I have to put them in S tier simply for the fact that they can wipe out a unit if you're not careful by petrifying everybody. Swordmaster, easy S. He's basically the upgraded version of the Fencer. And doesn't have the defense of these guys, but uh, I have to put him low S or high A simply because he has great weapons, but his sword naturally is not enchanted. Virtue weapon, Bane weapon, physical weapon, so he will not handle things like the Cataphracts, the Golems, the Dragons, as well as these guys. Some of the best stat progression in the game, but again, this guy's is better, and this guy's kit's just better. So, Seraph. We're gonna put her. We're gonna put her above the Azidaka because she's an upgraded version. She basically does an area of effect attack on everyone, like the dragon. Great dexterity. She can be put in front or back. Um, just an excellent, excellent character. Oh, green dragon more in the F tier. Um, Dragoon. <sighs> he's going to go A. He does not belong in S. Um, he's going to go right by the Swordmaster because they're basically the same character. If I was upgrading a character for Dragoon, I'd want to raise them as a Swordmaster and then turn him into this because he'd have the stats of the Swordmaster, but he'd have the damage. Problem is, his overall stats start to degrade because they just are not on par with the rest of these guys, and uh, you can only get one of them. He's cool, but I was very disappointed in his. Uh, I was very disappointed in his. Hmm, in his poor performance compared to the dragoons in the past games, it's irritating to get him because he do a bunch of quests and. Enchanter. <sighs> a lot of people don't like Enchanters. On his own, he's he's pretty crappy. High C probably. Um, better than the, you know, whatever. But I like him because he's basically... He got good good stats. You can put the Gallant Doll on him. And uh, when I like to have one Beast unit. And I like to have one Golem unit. That just seems like you're rounding out the game. And uh, he's necessary to have some good uh, good damage on your golems. Again, he's not great, but he's definitely above average. Fairies. They might be worse than zombies, but I, I just can't... Yeah, I just can't put anything below a zombie. <sighs> flame Brass. It's like the Flame Dragon. He's like... <sighs> I'm going to put him in low A... He does have a debuff, but it's not as good as the other dragons. He does look cool, but um, worse stats than both of these, but his area of effect damage is just a little bit more useful than the Bahamut, so they're going to be pretty close. Ghost, no damage, puts people to sleep. He's basically a crappy witch. I mean, well, he's about as low as you can go. Gremlin, like a fairy, does some damage, puts people to sleep, but... Why would you have a gremlin in your party? I mean, this is just, just get something useful. Griffin, basically a crappy version of the wyvern. I mean, we'll just put him down here. Uh, yeah, this suffers from the same thing. Crappy stats. Why would you have him over you know two good like decent units? Hydra, one of the top. Uh, one of the top. He's right up here with the Aussie. Because they can hit the air, we got to put him above this. Great stats, puts everyone to sleep. Upgraded version of the Water Dragon. It's the Hydra. Lich. Overall better than the... Uh, overall better than the, the Archmage, but the Archmage overall gets better stat progression. So I kind of got to put him right there. 1v1... Paladin wipes the floor with these guys, but in a decent unit, these guys... The perfect unit is basically three lit, like two liches behind three black knights. You know, cataphracts with axes and tons of magic. Uh, yeah, that's good. Ninja Master... <sighs> I gotta go high B. 
they're basically the A tier version, like the tier three version of fencers. Great stat progression, lots of, they're basically a Freya, but just a little bit better. They do magic attack, but a little bit better stat progression. Oh, Opinicus, so disappointing. Priests, A tier, uh, heal all, they're, it's just, if you want to make a holy unit, you're, you could, this game is so easy. We don't even need healers, but these guys basically break the game even further than they normally would. Princess, I kind of want to do S tier, but they also could belong in A tier, but they're going to go in S tier. On their own, they're not that great, but they increase the attacks of everyone else. You put her in a unit with three like paladins, that's 12 attacks in the front. If you have a Lich in the back with a Draconite book that attacks everybody. That's four attack alls. No unit in the game that exists could 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 defeat that unit, even if they were three or four levels below. It just the the game is just not hard enough to even justify that kind of combination. But the princess S tier pumpkin early on, I'm gonna say these are one of the units that actually make the game hard. We're going to go high B, because you combine them with some good damage, like some uh, Diana units that have some pumpkins in them, and these guys will wipe the floor with some of your high dam like high defense units, just decimate their HP. The Dianas can pick them off. They actually got a... It's a good combination. Like, on their own, they don't really turn into anything, but they're they're definitely above average. Ozzy... Uh, Quetzalcoatl. A tier, uh, really cool looking. These guys are all fairly same tier, but uh, this guy paralyzes, this guy puts him to sleep. That's where we're at with that. Raven, that's the Hawkman, a dark version of him being upgraded. He's above average, but he's not that. He's not that great. Like his his he's good because he flies, but besides that. You know, I'm not going to... He can be upgraded with enchanted weapons. He's got good dodge. But overall, him... And we'll put the Voltan up there right next to him. It's just it's just they're... They're good. He's got better magic damage. He's got better attack. But again, two attacks versus three. Um, unenchanted weapons versus enchanted weapons. Um, they fly, but... You know... Yeah, I'd rather have Angel Knights, Seraphs flying. I'd, they can't stand up to the the really good units. They're just they're they're they're. There's no tier three for the flying units. They have Hawkmen and then the upgraded version, so they kind of belong here anyway. Skeleton, the upgraded version of a zombie. Um, yeah, they live forever, but overall they're they're just pretty shitty unless you can give them good weapons. But if they get wiped out. This is just not worth it. Sphinx. AoE attacks. Great intelligence. The only unit really that the demons have that's worth fearing, that's good. Um, I'm going to put them in the same tier with the dragons. They don't have the same defenses, but they do great damage and they're, they're one of the few things that are actually a difficulty. Tiamat puts people to sleep. Really cool looking right up there with the top tier dragons. <sighs> Satoros, demon leader, um, basically a berserker, just probably not as good. He looks cool, but <sighs> it's C or D. I'll put him, I'll put him. <sighs> yeah, he's gotta be high C. Vampires, garbage. Um, it's just, they're just kind of crappy. So, sorry for kind of going down a little bit, but it's a lot of units, but overall, um, I like this list a lot more. I've played the game vanilla. I've played it with a lot of cheats and changes. I wish there was a hard version of this. I would love it if this game got modded by a modder or modding community. I have read that it's very difficult to do, but it's uh, um, it basically all the negatives of Ogre Battle March, the Black Queen, 
Uh, this kind of gets rid of most of that. It adds customizability. There's a few things I would change, like, you know, Dragoon's, Dragoon's not that good. Magic is still pretty OP. Um, having enchanted weapons as a default kind of breaks the game. But even just, just changing the level progression, um, making the enemies have better units, changing it so that the leaders are not always needing to be, you know, can be wiped out early. Um, with a few tweaks, this game could be actually difficult and fun. But, uh, yeah. So, anyway. I hope whoever watches this enjoys it. Uh, I kind of enjoyed making it. I don't know how long it's been, but, yeah. Hope you all have a good day. Um, I've never really done these before, but now that I've done it, I can see how addictive it is makes me feel powerful creating my own narrative and rules and imposing my beliefs on this list it's quite intoxicating but I hope you all have a lovely day I'm going to end it and uh, yeah have a good one <laughs>